Welcome everyone. Welcome to The Crowned Life. And today I want to talk to you about healing divine feminine energy. And, you know, I can tell you as a woman, a lot of us women have taken on a lot of masculine energy without even fully realizing it. Um, many of us came from fatherless homes, whether, you know, the father was physically absent or uh, emotionally absent or um, simply just dealing with men in our lives who have been operating out of wounded masculinity, this general lack of support from masculine figures in our lives have really um, left us kind of carrying the bag to kind of, you know, make up for the difference and really forcing us to step into a lot of masculine energy in the absence of, you know, others doing that. And I think the general lack of support as well uh, from, you know, male family, friends, and just society at large that is constantly drilling these messages into the minds of women that we need to go find ourselves in a career <clears throat> that is outside of the home, you know, outside of the family, and, you know, be a strong, independent woman, who doesn't need a man, um, this really um, influences, you know, the, the way that we live, our lifestyles. And, you know, I am very traditional, I'm going to say that up front. So, but, you know, I do feel like um, if you want to be into your career, that's fine. But we have devolved as a society to a point where women no longer have the choice, it seems, to stay home if they want to. And to me, that's not empowering. That's not freeing. When you have the choice, that's freedom. But we no longer seem to have that. And I think it's also good, you know, for women to be strong and independent. But, um, you know, we, I believe, have gotten away from learning healthy interdependency and what that means. And we've had to almost become the man and the woman in our own lives. And even if you're like a mother, like I am, you know, um, in a family dynamic, women having to be the man and the women, woman in so many different ways. So um, we've even got, you know, partners now as a woman, you, you have to look at the reality that when you want to partner with somebody, many of these prospective partners expect women to um, have a job, pay her own way, or at least financially contribute. And they will resent a woman oftentimes um, if her contribution is in the form of something other than a paycheck. And I've even seen this in very traditional uh, Christian households where you know, the belief is that the woman is going to stay home and take care of the kids, yet whether it's, you know, repressed or subconscious, the man is resentful that the woman's contribution is, you know, by saving daycare or, you know, saving in expenses for um, formula because she's breastfeeding, like he doesn't see the value in that. He wants the value to be the paycheck. And so there are a lot of strong pressures that women have, um, even in the most traditional, seemingly traditional environments, like a, a church or a Christian background. There's so many pressures on women to be more masculine and less feminine. And there's a lack of support with the femininity. And so as a means of survival, we often, maybe even without, even without being conscious of it, we become more masculine. We embody more of this masculine energy. And so um, signs that you've done this, okay? <laughs> signs that you have, uh, you're a feminine who's running on a lot of masculine energy and it's contrary to your nature um, is that you are angry you are bitter, you've had it, you've had it with life, you've had it with men, you've had it with relationships, <laughs> or you're burned out, you're just burned out, or you're on the edge of being burned out, you feel depleted, and the dreams of your 20s 
have been destroyed, or at least they, they were by age 30, 40 years old. Those dreams were destroyed from your 20s. And that's because you, you know, you dealt with a broken heart, broken marriage, marriages possibly, and a lot of broken promises. And this has left you feeling very overwhelmed and very stuck. So if you relate to any of this, stay tuned because in this video, we're gonna cover, you know, what is masculine and feminine energy? How is it different? How do you recognize when these energies are unbalanced and unhealed? Why is there no attraction without these differences? And how can you get into more feminine energy. And if you stay tuned to the end, I'm going to share with you on a personal level how I'm taking my own advice in my own life. Okay, so what is masculine and feminine energy? How does masculine energy differ from feminine energy? Let's start with the masculine energy. Uh, this is traditionally an energy of protecting and providing. It values honor, respect, sex, and it wants to be challenged. It wants to win. It's It likes to lead. It likes to initiate things, and it's very logical and decisive. A lot of times masculine energy is kind of head over heart energy, whereas feminine is heart over head, <laughs> but it's very directional. It, it can plan things out, it can strategize, and it craves a lot of freedom. It at times can present itself like an immovable mountain where it's very fixed, it's very still, it's very solid, because it's life protecting and it's life providing. And so um, very good energy we need it here. There's a time and a place for everything, right? But when masculine energy is wounded, there's a lack of trust. There's a lot of controlling and closed off behavior. Now with a feminine energy, in contrast, this is about nurturing and nourishing. It values connection, security, and a lot of times I think that men get this confused. You know, they will accuse a lot of women just very flippantly of being gold diggers, when in reality, it's not really about the gold, it's about the security. And again, I, I know there are real legitimate gold diggers out there and I'm not validating that behavior, but I think a lot of times, because security is so important for women, we want a committed man. We want a man with a solid job. We want a man that is strong, an alpha male who can protect and provide in a healed masculine state, right? Because we so value the security. We also value love and loyalty. We wanna feel loved, that's important to us. Feminine energy is about being able to relax and receive, right? Whereas the, the man in contrast is about leading and initiating. I wanna be able to sit back and relax and receive. It's very expressive, it emotes. Feminine energy craves intimacy, whereas masculine might crave more freedom, right? And where the masculine can be very fixed and still and immovable, the feminine energy can be very fluid. Think of it like as, as the masculine is like an immovable mountain, feminine is like a fluid ocean. And so this energy is very life-giving and life-nurturing. When feminine energy is coming from a wounded, unhealed place, there's a lack of boundaries, there's a lot of people pleasing, and there are feelings of unworthiness. So now that you know this, ask yourself, take a moment to think this through. Is your energy wounded? Does it need to be healed? Have you dealt with partners 
who were wounded. In other words, have you and your partners been operating out of authentic feminine masculine energy or not? How has this impacted your experiences with romantic partners, family members, fill in the blank. It could be a number of people, but how has that particularly impacted those of you who are dealing with the opposite sex? Let me give you some clues on what can happen when your energy is unbalanced and unhealed. When you can't trust in masculine energy in another person, often what happens is that you start embodying more of this masculine energy within yourself, right? It's to make up for the deficiency, like I, I can't get this from this other person, so I'm gonna have to step into more masculine energy, right? We do this a lot as women in relationships where, particularly if you're dealing with beta males who don't initiate, then, then the woman starts feeling like, oh, I guess I better take the lead here. I better initiate because if I don't, then he's not going to, and then this isn't gonna go anywhere. And so women start stepping more into this um, energy, a uh, masculine energy, and then they wonder why they end up not respecting the guy. And a lot of times, unfortunately, what happens is that it makes the masculine feel powerless. Right, because you're being the man in the relationship and at some level he knows it. He knows that he's not manning up and you are. And it makes him feel inadequate, even if it's at a very subconscious level. And yeah, over time you lose respect for him as well because he's not initiating, which is his rightful role. When men don't step into their rightful role, pay attention. It's going downhill from there, <laughs> you know? And so you need to, not try to cater to an unhealed state, but rather seek for it to be healed. If not with this person, then with another. Seek for it to be balanced. If not with this person, then with another, right? Because like I say in my previous videos, you, we, we can't fix people, we can't heal people, we can't change them, right? If ultimately they don't want to get healed, then we have to, you know, respect their choices to get balanced and healed with somebody who's willing to do that work with us. Um, when the masculine is too much in his feminine energy, the feminine is not going to be able to embody or relax into her own feminine energy. And this is another reason why it's a, rep a, a recipe for disaster. You don't wanna feed into the imbalance. Women, you don't wanna try to overcompensate. If you can't relax, you can't embody your own femininity. It's a downward spiral for you as well. Unbalanced masculine energy is about doing, doing, doing. There's a lot of striving without any contentment. Um, it's like hustle culture, okay? If you're a business owner, and I am, right? And I go listen to a lot of business coaches, many of which are men, and then what are they talking about? Hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> and, you know, I try to do it, okay? And my body is like, I mean, I can do it, but my body will talk back to me, which, by the way, will be in another, the next video. We're going to talk about the emotional body, but... Um, we're not built for this, this hustle culture, men are, okay? And again, I'm not saying we can't do it. I'm just saying that it's um, not natural for us, okay? And it's a lot about choosing work over play and deprioritizing enjoyment where, you know, we're achieving maybe a lot from this, but loving very little, it reminds me of that, that Bible verse, um, without love, I am nothing. And that's what you come to eventually. You might accomplish a lot, but you know, on a, on a material 3D level, but in a 5D emotional level, uh, you're drained, you're empty. Now with unbalanced feminine energy, this is more about being rather than doing, right? Doing was the masculine energy. So when the feminine energy gets very unbalanced, um, there's hedonism. There is a focus on now, now, now. Indulge me now, you know? <laughs> 
uh, without any kind of sense of direction or any kind of goals in life, no sense of really purpose, um, right? That masculine energy directs, okay? Um, you see how this balances the masculine energy directs, but that feminine energy can, can go in a, in a playful direction and have fun in a meaningful way, right? But when we take out the, the, the balance, it, there's, there's meaninglessness, okay? Meaning is lost in the play. It's just play for the sake of play. And either of these imbalances can in, in, in individuals can bring about an imbalance in a, in a relationship and unfortunately this can lead to depolarization where um, there's a loss of positive tension between both parties because of polarities right we need to we need those two sides of the coin and in, in order to have the whole coin all right if you don't have those differences, then you don't have positive tension. The tension then becomes very negative. And that's when you start seeing these relationships disintegrate. It's the positive tension that makes for attraction, negative tension that repels. So do you ever wonder why the person that you have the most attraction to and passion and sexual chemistry with you know is also the same person that you have the most arguments with have you ever like wondered about that <laughs> well this is because um, without polarity those differences there's no attraction and the tension between these differences, you know, it's what pulls you together, okay? So um, when there is none, then, you know, a lot of times men don't realize this and sometimes women don't even realize they're doing it either. I, I know I've done this and I didn't know why I was doing it until later, but sometimes to create that interest and that polarity, sometimes women will kind of nitpick or start a little something um, to, you know, create some sexual tension, okay, or some kind of polarity there, all right, to keep it spicy, to keep it going. Unfortunately, a lot of men don't realize this. And if you're dealing with a man who not only doesn't understand this about women, um, but is also very insecure within himself, then um, it, it's just going to spiral downward, right, when you do this. And um, it's going to just start a fight, okay and degrade the relationship maybe even further than it has already been because you were dealing with an insecure person or a not very not very self-aware person okay and so i think it's important for women to know that the more feminine you are the more likely you are to attract a more masculine man because of this polarity okay um and vice versa, men, if you want to attract a more feminine woman or more uh, traditional woman, then you, you need to be more of a traditional man, okay? You need to be the provider and the protector. If you're looking for a nurturer and a nourisher, you, you need to embody this polarity, okay? Women, if your engines are running mostly on masculine energies, then you're going to be attracting very feminine men. And granted, that's easy these days because a lot of men have been effeminized, uh, which is a whole nother subject for maybe another day. Okay, but particularly here in America, uh, there's been a lot of men who have been effeminized. And um, so super easy to find betas. They're they're you know, a dime a dozen, right? Alphas and are in short supply. And I'm not talking about fake alphas. I'm talking about the legit ones who've done the self uh, awareness and healing work. And they're really coming from a place of authenticity, authentically confident and competent, more importantly. Confidence that's based on competence, yes. We can't make men more masculine. I think that's important to say, though, as a side note, you know, yes, be more feminine if you want to attract more masculine. Or if you're, a, if you're masculine and you want to attract more feminine, you're, you need to embody more masculine energy, okay? But this does not mean that we can make other people, like we can't make men 
um, become more masculine um, by us becoming more feminine, especially if you're already in a relationship, <laughs> you know, and you picked this person and this is who they're at and, you know, this is what they want to be, you know, by you suddenly changing and becoming more masculine, it's not necessarily going to change their choice about who they want to be. But you can choose a partner who is more masculine and decide not to settle for any kind of effeminized males or beta males. Um, side note, I've already put out, uh, by the way, a video out here on YouTube on what women want. And I talk more about beta males in that video. So I'll have the link for it at the end if you're interested. Okay. But getting back to the subject at hand, it goes back to what I said earlier about if you're in a relationship and you're dealing with a beta male or a feminine man who is not ready to alpha up, you know, it's better for you to just cut your losses sooner than later. I mean, obviously you can have that heart to heart and see where it goes. Okay. But chances are, you know, he got with you because you were willing to accept him not alphaing up. Okay. And then if you come in and say, surprise, this is no longer acceptable. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say what's going to happen there, but <laughs> yeah, you can give it a try and find out for yourself. But um, yeah, if, if you have that heart to heart and you realize like this guy ain't alphing up, he's not going to do it. He's, he's just going to, um, I don't know, wait me out and see if I'm going to stick around anyway because of love or he's going to go on and roll the dice and see that if somebody else is going to put up with it, because I did for how long, you know, and a lot of women do, a lot of women do. So, um, the problem, like I said before, is if you're wanting him to take the lead and initiate and he doesn't step up to the plate and you decide, well, you're going to go on and do it for him. The moment you do that, you're setting the standard in the relationship for accepting, um, this dynamic between the two of you indefinitely. And what's the dynamic here? That you're the man in the relationship, that, you know, um, you're not going to be provided for or protected by him as a high-valued woman. And that you're going to be the one to protect and provide for somebody who's not doing the same for you. And yeah, this leads to the anger and bitterness that I talked about earlier um, and the resentment. And over time, you just end up losing respect for these men and you have, you know, they end up feeling no sense of honor and respect, which like I said before, is part of their value system. And so my advice is if you're in a relationship where this dynamic is going on, it's better for you to cut your losses now rather than later when you eventually realize, and you will, that this was a bad investment. And as much as you might love and care for this person, um, it is what it is. And, um, you know, you can't, you can't change people. Okay, so... I want to say also, um, women, let's, let's stop talking about how we don't need a man. Okay. I mean, that's a big turnoff for men. <laughs> Number one. Um, yeah, of course you don't require a man. Um, but maybe you want one and is that okay to admit? Yeah, I'd like to have a man in my life, you know, at least a real one, a real one. <laughs> Um, instead of saying, I don't need a man, <laughs> say, you know, I want a man. I desire a man. Um, and desire is really powerful. You know, there's a quote from Napoleon Hill uh, that reads, the starting point of all achievement is desire. Yeah, you got a desire. And I think that men respond to that desire very favorably as well. And so if you make a man feel particularly alpha, right? make that alpha male, male feel desired, then they respond favorably to that. But as long as you don't need a man, well, I mean, they're kind of useless then now, aren't they? Like, what what can they offer you? They Nothing. Even an alpha male, right? Because you don't need them. So we got to change the way we're talking, if not openly, outwardly, then inwardly within ourselves. And we've got to get open to this receiving, right? This feminine energy of allowing a man into our lives that can lead us to places worth going.
when we let him lead, right? I'm not talking about letting a man, a beta or a fake alpha, lead you right off a cliff. Oh, I know all about that story again. That's a whole nother video for another day. <laughs> I'm not talking about letting a man lead you off a cliff. Oh, heck no. I'm talking about allowing a man to lead you to places worth going. Um, the problem is, you know, a lot of men, they can't lead. Again, broken, unhealed, unbalanced masculinity a lot of men are in. They can't lead and they'll lead you right off that cliff, like I said. And so it's important for us to be able to identify the real alphas and then position ourselves as alpha females to match that polarity, right? In order to get an alpha male, you gotta bring alpha female into the equation. So what we can do is uh, a lot of us work on self-worth issues because like I said, one of the characteristics of uh, unhealed, wounded femininity is the unworthiness. Guilty here, right? I mean, I've been through a lot of that. And for those of y'all who are ex uh, astrology buffs, <laughs> you know, um, my Chiron is in Aries, okay? Self-worth issues self-worth wound all the way and if you got a chiron and taurus oh my gosh same thing all right so um definitely i've had to work hard on this issue and i think generally a lot of women do regardless of astrology all right but i think that we've got to change this perspective um to allowing and receiving like i said before um allowing somebody to come in and protect and provide and not associate that with weakness because it takes a lot of strength and vulnerability. I mean, you know, vulnerability is not weakness. It, it just takes a lot of strength to allow somebody into our lives who could potentially take advantage of us. It takes a lot of courage to open up to somebody who could hurt you, you know? So, I think the key here is you've got to practice selective permeability, really allowing in and receiving only those who are qualified by discerning, like I said, authentic males from those who are not. Who's got the confidence based on legitimate competence? Who's got it? <laughs> and then be vulnerable to that person, you know, let them in after they have qualified for having a supportive presence in your life. Some of you might feel like she's really judgmental, okay? Um, I'm not trying to be mean or demeaning to anybody, okay? But we do need to have some discernment here in matters of our heart. We can't just let anybody in. We've got to guard our hearts from relationships that are um, inequitable. There's not going to be a balanced exchange. That man is never going to give back to that woman what her worth is, what her value is, and what she's imparting to him, even if he wants to. Again, not trying to be mean or demeaning. Some men are just not in the position because they haven't done the self-healing work or the self-awareness work. They haven't ach achieved competence to have the confidence. They're not able. And again, it's not throwing shade at anybody, but it's just looking at the facts and honoring the truth. And especially for the women, knowing your worth and really guarding it like the high-valued woman that you are. And I think also if you are trying to make a decision in a relationship, whether it's a decision of do I want to be in this relationship or you're in a relationship and you're trying to decide, you know, what decision do I want to make here in this relationship? I've personally found in my own self-healing work that it goes back to this question. This really grounds you out as if you ask yourself, is this a loving decision for me? You've got to be your own best ad advocate and somebody who really loves you, a man, an alpha male who really cares about you is going to ask that question of himself. Is this a loving decision for her? Am I protecting her interests? Am I looking out for her or am I? Are my decisions in some way going to compromise her security that I know she values? 
Beware of people who are not demonstrating um, taking your best interest as their own. By asking you to engage in unfair exchanges or asking you to do something that threatens your security because, you know, they want you to provide for their security and comfort. And this is something, like I said, that beta males and fake alphas will do rather than provide it for a woman. They might show up, like I said, like a, they're, they're presenting like they're strong and confident and competent. I could do this, but I just first need you to do that, which is putting you at risk and vulnerability, all right? A real legit alpha would never do that. They would never do that. Okay, so how do we get into more feminine energy if we've gotten out of it? The short answer is, you know, we've got to be less about productivity and more about creativity. And I saw some ideas online from Dr. John Gray. Some of you might have already heard of him. He's a very popular psychologist. He wrote that best-selling book, um, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And... Um, he says, basically, you know, if you want to get more into feminine energy, um, the tips are, number one, move more, you know, get out in nature, take walks, do yoga, um, exercise, dance, um, maybe go swimming or be around animals, just move more. Um, don't be sitting at a desk constantly producing something, you know, at your computer, that's very masculine energy, okay? Another um, idea is wear unrestricted clothing, um, like go on a pants detox, <laughs> you know? Wear more skirts, wear more dresses, things that are free-flowing, okay? This is more feminine energy. Uh, third idea, hang out with your girlfriends. Fourth idea, ooh, he says have more orgasms. Oh, well, you, you, you can figure that one out for yourself, right? Need I say anything more? <laughs> um, number five, prioritize receiving. Yeah, get, get a, ma a massage, a pedicure, or, you know, buy yourself a gift. Yeah, or receive gifts from others, okay? And six, reconnect with relationships and your children. So this is not about, you know, texting people. It's about calling them. It's not about FaceTiming or Skyping. It's about meeting up with them. This is the connection that we're so into, the face-to-face, -face, the intimacy that we're wanting to develop. We gotta tap into that more. Number seven, indulge your senses, eat more chocolate. Hey, I'm, I'm right there. Drink more wine. Mmm, I can do that. And um, take in the sights and smells of like going to the market or, you know, going out and doing something that is uh, going to put you on maybe sensory overload. <laughs> and then finally, eight, create like paint, write, um, make a meal, you know, create something. And on the day to day, some of this might be a challenge for you, particularly if you're like me and you got very much as a business owner, very much in this productive masculine energy mindset, okay, of um, checking boxes off my little to do list and, <laughs> you know, and being really driven of, okay, what's next? What's next? What's that? Like, no more of that, all right? If you need help breaking out of that, that mindset as I did, it might uh, help you to ask yourself on the daily, uh, how can I make today more enjoyable? Because that's the challenge. This is not about how do you make it more profitable or productive. That's masculine energy. It's how do I make today more enjoyable? Okay, so now I'm going to share with you how I've personally taken my own advice in my life. You know, I recently had a back injury, and I'm going to talk about that in the next video about healing the emotional body. But part of that healing work was realizing that a lot of the um, injury was stress-related. And the stress had to do with me embodying a lot of masculine energy, and I needed to get out of that. I needed to sub more into my feminine energy. And so how did this even happen? You know, because as a woman who has a lot of feminine energy, like in my natal chart, 
again, for those of you who know astrology, you know what I'm talking about. I'm a very feminine woman, but how did this happen where I got out of my element, for lack of better wording? Well, I'll share it with you. And some of you are probably going to relate to my story in some respects um, and, and can maybe, you know, relate to how this is manifesting in your own life, okay? The last five years um, since my divorce, I got away from my feminine energy because I was single parenting with little or no support. And that really left me struggling to be the provider and the protector for my children. And it really left me very little room in my life to be the nurturer. And so by default, I fell into this kind of hustle culture and it was a means of survival for me, which was really a far cry from who I used to be, which believe it or not, <laughs> Some of y'all wouldn't even recognize me, you know, who I used to be. Uh, I used to be like a domestic goddess. I mean, I was really about my home and family. I was about making my house a home, and I used to regularly cook food from scratch. And I took a lot of pride in that. I really enjoyed that. But guess what? <laughs> you know what? As an act of healing, I've decided I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to find a way where there is no way. Yeah, that's an act of faith there, but I'm going to be that again. And notice that I said be, not do. Notice the difference. I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to allow who I am to be rather than try to do, do, do something that I wasn't maybe built for, designed for, intended for. Um, but circumstances and society have maybe pressured me into that, that mold or that box that's not really natural to me. So I'm going to be who I am more again. And I'm going to not only do this as an act of healing, but I'm also going to do this to share that with you, okay? In upcoming videos, I'm going to be putting some of that content out. Um, and you know what, I'm, I'm going to warn you, some of my viewers are going to get confused, okay? Like, what in the heck is she doing? Is this a cooking show now? I mean, what did I subscribe to? Is this a cooking channel? Or is this a self-help channel? Or is this a whatever channel, you know? And, and that's because a lot of people have this very fixed masculine energy idea that things need to fit into this fixed immovable box, and, you know, that the content needs to be that way. But remember, that's, you know, not feminine energy. Feminine energy flows creatively. And uh, like I said, some people are not going to understand this, but I'm sharing it with you so that you understand when you see this stuff. Like, uh, it's partly as an act of self-healing for myself, but it's also trying to give that to a lot of my viewers who are also divine feminine and need to tap more of that energy alongside me. Okay. Um, and so I hope that does in turn heal you to share my healing with you. And um, if you want to make sure that you're getting more of that content, make sure that you are subscribed and hit up for notifications, hit that bell for notifications. Uh, make sure it's active. I should say, make sure that you have activated that so that you are getting notified when all of this content comes online and I hope you do enjoy it and like I said next video is on healing the emotional body so I hope you'll join me for that thanks for watching